Hi there. This video will be about my first assignment of my SPH4U course, which there are mainly two questions. One of them is about the tension force inside a, 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 a system, and the second is about the um, circular motion, which is mainly calculating centripetal force and the centripetal acceleration. So let's take a look at the first question. It says that two heavy crates, M1 and M2, lies on the different inclines with um, angle 18 and 33 degrees, respectively. And a cable which runs over a pulley connects the crates. And the masses of the cable and the pulley are negligible. And assuming that the, um, each incline is frictionless and that the system is in equilibrium, the mass of M1 is 4.26 times the, 10, the power of 10. The sorry, the square of 10 kilograms. So, one thing to notice is because the system is in equilibrium, that the net force in two sides should be zero. So, let's take a look at question A. It says, determine the tension in the cable, while B says to calculate the mass of the second mass, which needed to keep the system in a state of equilibrium. Last one is to like to suppose that to change the mass and the system moves to the left, which other conditions remain the same and to determine the magnitude of acceleration. So let's solve the first question, the tension in the cable first. Well, as I mentioned, because the system is in equilibrium, so the net force X um here is, uh, it means that the net force in the x come out the x direction. I draw a uh, force. I draw F V D of this because it's inclined like on a slope. So the diagram on the top is like the truly nature of the diagram. Like it's supposed to be like this. Well, I re well I relabeled axis, which the graph on the bottom is in horizontal and vertical directions, which is more easier to indicate. Well, by applying GISP method, we can know that the FGX one, which means the x component of x f g of the of mass one equals to sine 18 times 4.26 times 10 squared times 9.81 because it equals to the angle the horizontally um, component times the mass and 9.81 is the gravitational acceleration and, and this question is asking the um, tension inside the force uh, no, the, the, the tension force yeah. so in this case, F T should be equals to F G X because it's in the equilibrium. Well, by substituting the values, that F T equals to all these values that I mentioned before, which after calculation the answer is um one thousand two hundred ninety one point four newtons, and the angles is just. Because I relabeled axis, so it seems to be horizontal, but actually it has a little bit of incline, which is the same as the incline of a slope, which is night, um, which is right, pointing right and eighteen degrees up. Well, let's take a look at the second question, which it says to calculate the mass of M two needed to keep the system in a state of equilibrium. Well, I draw a um, diagram of the whole system, not for each crate, but for all of, all of them. Well, there's a mistake in the drawing, which the F tension on the right should be F tension from 1 to 2, but not 2 to 1. And in this case, net force should be equal to 0, because the system is in, is in equilibrium, and the FGX1 should equal to 
FGX2 because the, um, the tension, the two tension are the same, same in magnitude but different in direction, which they eliminate, which they um, equals to each other and they could be eliminated. Well, FGX1 um, in, S, in S part, we substitute the values. And FGX1 equals to, uh, to 1291, which we calculated on the previous question. This equals to FGX2, which which equals to sine 33 degree times 9.81, which is the gravitational potential energy, times the mass of the second crate, which is M2. Well, after calculations, we can get that M2 equals to 241.7 kilograms. So the mass of M2 is 241.7 kilograms. And for the third question, question C, it supposes that the mass of M1 is 4.26 times 10, the square root of 10, and the mass of the second crate is 1.995 times the power of um, yeah, power of 10. And it says the crate moves to the left. So, the angles and other conditions are the same, which is fric frictionless. We don't need to consider friction. And to calculate the magnitude of the acceleration. So in this case, the whole system is moving to the left. So F net is also pointing left. And by applying GISP method, in G part, we know that um, the mass, which is 4.26 times power, the power of 10 and 1.95 times the power of 10 respectively for mass 1 and mass 2. And we the, the value we need to find is the magnitude of acceleration, which we can simply apply the formula that F0 equals to the um, like sigma f to the left minus sigma f to the right. Because obviously, the left side force is bigger because the system is moving to the to the, to the left. Well, F net is also equal to the mag the magnitude of M one and M two added together times acceleration. So, in S part, we just simply need to substitute the values, which F which sigma F to the left equals to the mass of M one times the gravitational potential. Oh uh, no, gravitational acceleration times sine eighteen degrees plus tension force. Well, in the, at the right side, it's M2 times gravitational acceleration times sine 33 degree plus Ft. So Ft in both sides can also be limited, which M net equals to 9.81 times M1 times sine 18 degrees minus M2 times sine 33 degrees, which we re we can just keep my, um, 9.81. It doesn't change. The answer is 9.81 times 25.4. Sorry. So 25.4 times 9.81 equals to the net force, which is also equals to the mass times acceleration. And the mass here to be the, um to make a notice that the mass here is total mass, which is point 4.26 plus 1.95. 5 times this, um, the square root of 10 and multiply by acceleration and after calculation we can get that acceleration equals to 0 0.4 meters per second square so the magnitude of acceleration is 0 0.4 meters per second square Okay, so let's take a look at the final question, which is a whole question about circular motion. It says, suppose Earth turn with a greater rotation speed to determine what the period of rotation in hours must be for the centripetal acceleration to equal to g, which g here is the gravitational acceleration, um, and it's 9.81 meters per second square. So the radius at Earth equator is 6.378 times 10 to the power of 3 kilometers. And to be noticed, 
that the period of rotation is in hours, but not in seconds. And also, the radius should be turned into the unit of meters, because the acceleration, the like the unit of acceleration is meters per second squared, but not kilometers. Which radius actually equals to six point three seven eight times ten to the power of six meters. And acceleration equals to nine point eight one meters per second squared. And we need to find t in this case, which is the period. And by applying the formula of the centripetal acceleration, which equals to the four, uh, four times the square of pi times radius divided by the square of period. By substituting the values, we can get that 9.81 equals to four times the square of pi times 6.378 times the times 10 to the power of 6 and also divided by the period square which after calculation we can get period equals to 5066 second and here's a convert here we need to convert our uh, second into hours which we only need to divide it divide 5066 by 300 3600 yeah, use seconds to divide by second, because one hour is three hundred six uh, three thousand six hundred second. After calculation, is one point four one hours, so we can get the answer that the period of rotation is one point four one hours. And that's all for the video. I hope you like it. See you next time.